Hi everyone, my name is Brendan Philbin. I'm going to be talking to you today about our COVID-19 regional growth model and forecasting capacity. So first things first, a little bit about myself. I spent five and a half years at Clarkson University getting my bachelor's and my MBA with a concentration in data analytics. I've been working for Albany Med for eight years now and the last four I've been on the analytics team. Albany Medical Center is a 766 bed academic medical center. It's about three hours north of New York City. So in the beginning of April, Albany was still in the early stages of the COVID-19 outbreak. There were only about 1,000 cases in the region with an adult population of 1 million people. At the same time, New York City was reaching its peak with thousands of new cases every day and hospitals overflowing. Albany Med led an initiative with other hospitals in the area to transfer some COVID patients from the city up to Albany. So hospital leadership needed to know, would we have the capacity to treat these transfers if local cases were about to skyrocket? So I was tasked with leveraging a publicly available COVID-19 regional growth predictive model to provide a daily report with the latest actual data and forecasts. I pulled regional data from Johns Hopkins University COVID-19 data repository and census info from our new real-time ADT data in the EDW. I loaded regional data, census data, and the forecast output into R to generate an R markdown HTML report summarizing the current and future state. The graph here is from the first iteration of the forecast and it was made with the worst case scenario parameters. You can see that even in this worst case scenario, the hospital wouldn't reach capacity until at least 50 days out. That meant there was plenty of capacity to treat the New York City patients. A few days later, the report had evolved and the model had been tweaked to use more conservative and realistic inputs. We forecasted census with and without the transfer patients and we saw what we wanted to see. The higher census from the transfer patients would burn off over time we would return to the original curve. The set of graphs on the bottom shows the actual daily census numbers as of May 18th, and you can really see how the impact from accepting transfers was temporary. With the model inputs being recalculated daily, we were able to observe the flattening of the curve as more and more preventative measures were put in place. In early April, Albany Med was able to accept 45 patient transfers from New York City, and over the next few months, we were able to accept 126 more transfers from other healthcare facilities. If you look at the length of stay of those patients, Albany Med has actually used more capacity for treating transfer patients than we have for local direct admits. So a few lessons I learned from this. Uh, first, efficient data visualization. Time was incredibly valuable for hospital leadership. So this report had to convey a ton of information a clear and concise way. Second, making your code robust and reusable. I was constantly changing, adding, removing elements of the report. I had to make sure that all of it would work every day as we updated with new data. And finally, use every resource that is available to you. I would have loved to build my own predictive model, but it would have taken days or even weeks. By using the plug and go model, it allowed me to skip right to the report development phase, which meant the turnaround time from the ask to the report delivery was only two days. And that's all from me. Uh, again, my name is Brandon Philbin and thank you very much for watching.